How's everybody doing? Good. 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 Well, it's uh, you know, great to be out uh, day one of practice. Uh, exciting day. Um, you know, it's just good to be back, uh, be back together and uh, a little bit more normal. We may not be completely normal just yet, uh, you know, in, in, in this country or in this region, but, uh, you know, it's, it's good to be a little bit closer to, to doing what we uh, are accustomed to doing this time of the year. So um, good enthusiasm, uh, good effort from the kids. Uh, had a lot of the first day stuff. Uh, I told uh, the players that, you know, the, the thing that's just so glaring right now is you, you have those young guys from last year that got a lot of experience Okay, now, you know, they look at, you know, they're not as bright-eyed out there. And you have the, the new guys or the young guys who are just coming in, and they're like a deer in a headlight out there today. So uh, it's just uh, it's refreshing to have uh, the experience coming back that we do have uh, from the guys that played so much last year. So uh, day one's in the books. Uh, get a, uh, some meetings in this afternoon, walk through tonight, and get ready to go tomorrow morning. Of course, it would have to rain on the first day. Um do you like a little bit of rain though? Not if it's not too much, or do you guys have to be careful with maybe um, turf and everything? Well, just you, the thing you don't want to do day one is just rip up your grass fields. Right. I mean, we've we've stayed off of them for over a month to make sure that they're in shape. So you had to uh, you had to be a little bit careful. And it gets a little congested with uh, the whole team on the turf, so you, you can't do that because of safety. But so it's you know, but it's, it's good. It's good to get some moisture. It makes people you know work on handling a wet ball. Uh, I don't ideally want it day one with uh, guys that are, you know, first college practice with some of them, but uh, hey, it is what it is. They had to deal with it, and uh, we got through and functioned just fine. Coach, you've made really good use of the new transfer rules and uh, the transfer market. What are some of these guys going to be able to do for you coming in this, this fall a little bit? What's the general feeling overall? Well, I mean, I, I think that some of them are going to help us. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, some there's still some unknown about. Uh, the guys that were with us in the spring is a little bit more known. But, uh, I mean, you're sitting here day one in helmets. I mean, I don't know how much I can tell about uh, some of the kids just yet. You know, ask me, ask me that question here in about two weeks. From when you ended the spring game to today, what maybe progress physically, mentally, what, does anything yeah. kind of stand out at that point to now? Bigger, faster, stronger. We're in better shape. We look a heck of a lot better. Um, I think uh, – Continued mental progression as far as just uh, some 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 mental discipline, mental toughness, uh, camaraderie. Uh, I think those are the biggest things. That just comes from you know having a couple of months uh, you know of training together. You're big on physicality. The NCAA has only made a, a change as far as number of contact days and all that sort of stuff. What are kind of your feelings on that, and how do you approach that? Uh, with, you, with wanting to promote physicality, but also safety at the same time? Well, I'm, to be honest, it's not going to change us a ton. Uh, you know, we have a few less full padded days uh, during preseason camp, but, um, you know, a lot of the things that we have, have done in the past, you know, won't change. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, all of us, you know, I say us, you know, the, the head football coaches that run camps, you know, you want to, you got to get that contact in because that, that protects the kids too. If you don't have enough contact during the preseason camp, you go out there, you'll be beat up by week three because they're not used to the physicality of the game, and you're probably not gonna play very well. So it's just always the fine line of you have to get enough contact, you have to get enough physicality, you have to get enough, you know, reps and all that stuff during preseason camp and you know be healthy and be uh, you know be fresh and ready to go when the opener gets here. What are some of the things you want to tweak and get better at as you go to shells and then go to full pads? Well, you know, it's you're, you're, you're looking, if you look at a year ago, it's just, you just want to be so much crisper in game one. You know, uh, a year ago in game one, I thought we played really, really hard. I thought we were really, really sloppy. Uh, and, you know, against a team like UCF, you couldn't do that. So I think, uh, you know, with some of the guys that have experience coming back, I just want to see a much, much crisper execution as we get on into the padded days and get into, you know, week two of practice and all that stuff as compared to where we were a year ago. Um, you know, as far as program overall, it's just like we talked about in the off season, really just want to build on the way we finished the season last year. Uh, I thought we were playing very well at the end of the year. I thought we were playing with great physicality. Uh, I, I really love the way we were playing defensively at the end of last year. So I uh, just wanted to build on that going into the going into the season. With the running backs, Keaton and Rajay were, yeah. were out there and splitting reps with the first team and all that. Yep. How is that? 
rotation going? I know there's some guys behind there who you're trying to want to get game ready as well. Well, and, and it's something I'll talk to the kids about this afternoon. When we had our first practice last year, I think Rajay was our fourth team tailback and Keith was our fifth team tailback. Uh, and now, you know, look what a difference a year makes. Uh, you know, so I think in that room, it doesn't really matter where they are today. What matters is where they are when we get ready to play on September second. And uh, you know, I think you know, I think all of us know who number one and number two are, or number one and co-number one. Uh, is kind of the way we see it. Uh, we got to figure out first is who's that next back. You know, uh, is it uh, is it a, a, an older guy like Maceo? Uh, is it a young guy like you know Pop or Jamani? You know, who is it? So uh, you know, the thing is, they'll they'll figure that out. You know, nobody can say around here that you don't, the kids don't determine the depth chart because, uh, you know, they do it by their play on the field. Looks like Avery Jones still working at center, and he got that opportunity in the spring. What progress have you seen him make there? And then kind of take us through the, the conversations of, hey, do we want Fernando back at center or keep working Avery there? Right. Well, I mean, we know, we know Fernando can do, can play there, start there, do a great job there. What you're trying to do is get your best lineup on the field and fit guys we have the luxury for the first time since I've been here of, you know, you have two pretty solid groups of offensive linemen. So you're trying to fit, you know, who fits where based on their abilities the best. And it's not just, you know, let's just get five guys on the field that can, you know, hopefully function. Uh, you know, Avery, very intelligent, very athletic, runs really, really well. Um, you know, he could be a really, really good center in this league. Uh, Fernando, Fernando can play center. Fernando can be really a guard in this league. So you really, you're, you're just trying to figure out where they function best. Uh, same thing with Nashad, same thing with Trent. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys that have some flexibility positionally. You're just trying to figure out where they, where they fit best and get our best lineup in the next, you know, three or four guys uh, ready. Coach, do you have to pull back the effort some on day one from some guys, guys that want to go 100 miles an hour right out the gate? It, it's it's kind of a mixed bag, you know. You have those guys, you know. I'm, I'm worried about uh, Demetrius Mooney tackling somebody on day one. Uh, and Bruce Bivens bringing the hammer right. on day one. Yeah, and, and and but you know, but you know, we didn't have anything too bad today. But you had those guys, and then you got like I talked about before. You have maybe a, a, a younger guy that's not real sure of himself yet, and you got to try to speed them up. So it's pretty common day one stuff today. Uh, you know, they'll kind of fall into a, you know, fall into a rhythm here in the next couple of days. But, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather be pulling them back than trying to speed them up, you know, especially with the older guys. With these guys getting an extra year, you've got a whole year of experience out of a lot of them last year, a free year of experience. What's that going to do for you guys coming into this season a little bit and in the future? You know, it's going to set, it seems like it's going to set you up well for moving forward. Well, you know, for the first time since I've been here, we're going to take the field with 85 scholarships. You know, and because of the COVID seniors, you know, that first year I think I played with 72 or something like that. So, um, you know, that, it, it, that whole deal is going to benefit us. Um, you know, it's great because now all of a sudden, you know, Jason Shuford played a lot last year and he's got five years to play four. Now, is he going to be here that whole time? I don't know because, you know, those guys are going to graduate, you know, before their eligibility is up now. Uh, I'm just happy we got him here now. But I do think, you know, for the program overall, this whole mess is going to benefit us roster management-wise. Um, I know you've seen a lot of stuff coming out of other, other places around the country about, you know, how they're struggling to manage their roster because of this. Um, and that's going to be an issue with the high school recruits and having enough places to go uh, in the next couple of years. But for us, uh, it's going to be something to help us fix everything. Preseason poll came out today. Do you feel that Cincinnati is the favorite, and do you tell, show your team where East Carolina ranked in that thing? Well, I haven't seen the preseason poll, so I haven't. They got you at eight. Um, but uh, it doesn't matter what the preseason poll says. It matters what the postseason poll says. You know, last time I checked, that's the most important one. But uh, I do think Cincinnati is until somebody knocks them off. Uh, you know, they're the they're the best team in the league. You know, they won the league championship last year. I thought they were the best team we played last year. Uh, so, uh, you know, certainly they're, they're the, the, the preseason favorite. Uh, but this is a tough league. This, is, this league has a lot of depth. Um, you know, you, you never know week in, week out. You know, it's going to be, you're going to, I, I like our chances in every game we play, but it's going to be a freaking dogfight every week.
they're going to start this thing. Are you healthy? Are you at full strength? Or, you know, where are you kind of at um, at this point? We don't, we don't have anything major. Um, you know, we've got one, one kid with a hamstring, one with an ankle, uh, but nothing that's going to hold them out more than just a couple of days. So we're pretty healthy right now. As you touched on the preseason poll, what does a preseason watch list, preseason, you know, recognition for awards mean to you? Or is that just, do you kind of wish they didn't do that? To a degree, you say it absolutely means nothing because all I think it is maybe a little bit of a distraction maybe because uh, the last thing Roger Harris can do is start thinking he's arrived because if he does, then you know, he's going to look up and he's going to be watching somebody else play. Uh, so I think it's important for, for our guys to keep their edge and not, not read that stuff too much. Uh, that being said, in 2019, I don't think we had a preseason anything. So it's good to have uh, you know, guys on your roster that uh, you know, have the ability to be on those lists. How did the quarterbacks do today? We always have to ask that, especially on a, a first day. How, how would you evaluate that? Well, QB1 had a good day. So, uh, I mean, but he's, God, he's almost as old as I am. Man. That's what I told him. So, I said, you know, he's a savvy, the savvy vet out there. So, uh, and then the, the young pups, I mean, I, like I was talking to Mason during stretch. I was like, you know, last year at this time, you were inside having some kind of a, you know, a nervous breakdown or something or other because you just, you know, eyes that big kind of deal. You know, he was one of those freshmen last year. Uh, Stubblefield was too, but uh, now all of a sudden you got Flynn, you got Stubby, you got Mason, that they all have that experience, uh, and so at least they don't look like that nervous freshman in his first college practice. You know, you look at you look at Walter. I mean, kid with a ton of ability, and you know he's he's just still trying to learn how to function out there. So um, I think fine for day one uh, until until we have, start having a few more live bullets. I wouldn't put too much into it though. How do you keep those guys all into it? Because they're all good, you know? Yeah. Your third and fourth string guys, or you're just starting a lot of places. Well, I mean, a lot of the stuff we did today, uh, which, you know, I apologize you guys have been out there for the, the team uh, competition portions of practice, but we were doing uh, practices on two different fields, or two different ends of the field. So we had, you know, two inside runs going. We had two pass scales going, two team uh, units going. And so you have, really four offenses going against four defenses, ones and twos on each end of the field. So every quarterback gets plenty of reps, every safety gets plenty of reps, every lineman gets plenty of reps. Uh, you know, some of the guys probably got more reps than they wanted today, but uh, that, we just feel like we, with the depth we have, we've got to, we've got to practice that way during preseason camp. Otherwise, you know, that kid that may be four on your depth chart right now, and he may be the best one in the room, you know, because he's a young new guy. But until you get him reps, there's no way to evaluate him. Uh, and those quarterbacks, you, you would never get some of those good young quarterbacks reps if you didn't do that. So we're going to try to practice that way as much as we can here during preseason camp. Anything else? All right. Good to see you guys in person again. Glad I'm not looking at you through a freaking screen. Amen. I'll see you this afternoon. In a few hours. Yeah. <laughs>